Hello and welcome to the International Quilt Museum's Virtual First Friday Fun. I'm Lauren Holt, Education Coordinator at the museum, and for today's presentation we're going to be looking at quilts as memory objects. Let's get started. What are memory objects? Objects and memories are often connected in the human brain. Memory objects are physical things that we associate with strong memories. The memory might be of a person, a place, an event, or an emotion. Seeing and holding an object reminds us of those moments and people. For example, an earring might remind you of the person who wore it. A rock you picked up might remind you of a walk that you took, or a piece of clothing might help you remember a special day. Quilts can fill all of these roles, and sometimes quilters make quilts that are intended to be memory objects, recording things, events, or emotions that they find important. The act of creating a quilt can sometimes help the quilter think about those memories or process their emotions too. Memory jars are one way that people save small objects that are important to them, like buttons, notes, stickers, badges, bits of felted art or embroidery, rocks, shells, or pins. In this quilt, Terry Hancock Manget made fabric jars and attached many small objects to the top of the cloth as embellishments. Changes in the background fabric creates the illusion that the jars are sitting on a table. The jars are outlined with energetic bright cloth and are filled with small objects in many sizes and shapes, fitting many interests and altogether conveying a lively sense of joy. Some quilts are made to preserve specific memories. This quilt, called One Spring Day in a Canoe, was made by Rumi O'Brien and shows a happy, relaxing journey in a canoe with her husband. The two float along the river together, traveling across the quilt and enjoying the nice day. Of this quilt, Rumi O'Brien said, From the start, I enjoyed the ride. No frantic catching up with this or that project, but just relaxing and basking in the sun. On each side of the creek, the meadows were alive with spring grasses and the returning geese were making merry in small groups. As usual, my husband had a book along and was probably oblivious to the surroundings. We usually have coffee and cake around 10 o'clock at home, but we couldn't easily brew coffee in a canoe. The air was warm and the current was gentle. It was really nice, this relaxed canoe ride. Other quilts are made from memories of emotions. In this darker colored quilt called Crisis, Rumi O'Brien recorded the memory of her emotions after an argument with her brother. In the quilt, a small figure in a small boat rides jagged waves chased by a large and angry fish. Of this quilt, Rumi O'Brien said, my brother's harsh words agitated me. It was like I was surrounded by huge waves in a stormy sea, tossed up and down in the emotion. I started feeling like a big fish was ready to swallow me, chasing me, and I was scared. I worked and worked at the quilt, but I could not create angry fish. Then it came to me that a face without eyebrows always seems placid. So here you see fish with eyebrows, the first such kind in the world. In contrast, the faraway figures have minimal facial expressions. They have almost no detail at all. Their arms do not flail about. I believe this is the way to combat a crisis. Just write it out. Sometimes an event in an artist's community inspires their work. The Koalinga earthquake struck at 4.42 p.m. on Monday, May 2nd, 1983, just outside Koalinga, about halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco, and not far from quilter Jean Ray Laurie's home in Clovis, California. As described in the quilt, the earthquake measured 6.5 on the Richter scale. 94 people were injured in the quake, and nearly 2,000 homes were damaged. In the quilt, Jean Ray Laurie has represented these homes in bright colors, setting houses with hearts over their doors into different tilts and angles, some with sharp lines cutting through them to portray the damage and to preserve the memory of the quake. Some quilters explore other people's memories in their art. For this quilt called Dawn, left Illinois for California, April 15, 1859, Anna von Mertens was inspired by a quilt inscription. In 1859, the Heslop and Shuey families recorded the date that they left their home in Hamilton, Illinois for the three-month journey to California on a quilt. 
In her artist statement, Vaughn Merton said, I'm exploring the rift between past and future, portraying events. I used the stitch to follow these trails, tracing the paths with my fingers. The dotted line of hand stitching is a marker of uncertainty, a way of exploring. The time invested in making the work, allowing for contemplation and internalizing, becomes part of how the work is viewed. I see all of these elements as a form of mapping, reflecting the need to get my own bearings in this vast universe. Finally, some quilts might recreate favorite objects out of fabric, like this one, Time for Supper by Aiko Okano. The bright colors and careful attention to detail in the recreations of Japanese dishes in this quilt convey the artist's fondness and care for her subject and the good memories she has for each dish. Of this quilt, Okano said, since Japanese cuisine is simple, first I thought it was going to be challenging to make it, but I am surprised that I could express how wonderful the Japanese cuisine is with only fabric and thread. I hope viewers of this work will enjoy our food culture, such as sushi, bento, fish, etc. Now, on to the first Friday Fun Challenge. This month, the challenge question is, what would you put in a memory jar? What objects remind you of special days, events, or people? We have a coloring sheet based on Terry Hancock Magnet's Memory Jars quilt, and we invite you to record objects and memories that are important to you. In this example, I've tried to record a different type of memory in each jar, with one jar full of objects, one jar showing a scene from a memory, and one jar representing the emotions of a certain memory. Whatever you choose to make, we'd love to see the results, and I hope you'll share your art with us in the comments below this video on Facebook or by tagging us at International Quilt Museum on Instagram. For more information about these quilts and others that act as memory objects, we invite you to visit our current exhibition, Trying to Make Sense of It, 9-11 Loss and Memorial Quilts, and to check out our past exhibitions, The Story Quilts of Rumi O'Brien and Aiko Okano's Delectable World in virtual form on the International Quilt Museum website. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and thank you for joining us for First Friday Fun.